Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our presentation on an integrated digital twin framework for validation of autonomous vehicles across different scales and operational design domains. First of all, uh, let us look at some of the challenges that are associated with autonomy validation right now. First and foremost is that there are autonomous vehicles that vary across different scales. They target different operational design domains. They have different sizes, different driving architectures, so on and so forth. The next one is that there are a variety of software stacks and APIs that have been used for developing these autonomy algorithms. Different vehicles target and use different uh, APIs and frameworks. And finally, uh, the test protocols for validation are also one of the key concerns. Do we want to just do pure virtual testing? Do we want to do just pure physical testing? Or do we want to do a hybrid testing by uh, mix and match of both virtual and physical testing? The opportunity that it creates for us as researchers is to come up with uh, frameworks or ecosystems that can now allow us to integrate algorithms for different vehicles, maybe for different scales or different uh, operational design domains. Uh, we can have a streamlined framework for autonomy validation uh, in terms of the different APIs or the software stacks that exist. And finally, uh, these frameworks can help us to perform seamless real to sim as well as sim to real transfers, thereby flexibly allowing us to perform virtual, physical as well as hybrid testing. So now let us uh, introduce what we have developed and what we call auto drive ecosystem to mitigate or address some of these challenges. Uh, what this ecosystem is, uh, is a part of three main components. First one is the dev kit, which is a set of flexible APIs and tools for prototyping algorithms that can be targeted towards the vehicle as well as the infrastructure. Secondly, we have the simulator, uh, a digital twin simulator to be exact. And what this could allow is prototyping and verification of algorithms at nascent stage, and potentially also be combined with what we call test bed for digital twin applications for hybrid testing, or just the test bed for pure physical deployment and validation of autonomy algorithms. So now let us delve a little bit deeper into this digital twin framework, uh, starting with the vehicle digital twin themselves. So as you can see in the picture here, we have vehicle digital twins across different scales as you go from top to the bottom. And each of these vehicles target different ODGs as you can see from the figures themselves. In this presentation particularly, we would be focusing on these four vehicles. And for the case study in point, these are sufficient to uh, be Exam uh, examples of vehicles across different scales and operational design domains as you can see. So now let us talk about each of these vehicles uh, in more detail. First one is Nigel, which is, which is the uh, default or the o vehicle that we started developing from scratch in our prototype ecosystem, which is a 114 scale vehicle with a custom open source uh, chassis design. Uh, one of the interesting things is that it uh, offers independent four-wheel drive and independent four-wheel steam capability and the operational design domain that it targets is on-road autonomous driving. If you look at the figures on the right hand side on the top, what you see is a simplified representation of the digital twin of the vehicle. Uh, the figure on bottom left represents uh, an experiment that we conducted out of many for characterizing and system identification and then calibrating the digital twin for uh, exact match in the digital space. And finally, you have a depiction or a glimpse of how the digital twin works. Uh, this template is uh, same for the upcoming slides. So for the next vehicle, which is again a small scale vehicle of 110 scale, uh, this vehicle is different in the sense that the operational design domain here is now on-road autonomous racing as opposed to just driving. Uh, next, we move on to mid-scale vehicles. Here, we have a vehicle called Hunter SE, which is a commercially off-the-shelf product. Uh, the scale is approximated to be one-fifth scale of an actual full-scale vehicle. And one of the key aspects of this vehicle is that it can target on-road as well as off-road autonomous driving. And finally, we come to full-scale vehicles such as this. Uh, this is a Chrysler Pacifica retrofitted with uh, onboard compute sensing and drive by wire capabilities. Uh, the scale is, as it is obvious, it's a one-inch scale, full-scale commercial vehicle. 
and the operational design domain is uh, commercial on road driving. <coughs> Let us now talk about the environment digital tools and the same template follows here where you go from small scale to mid scale to full scale environments for each of the rows. Uh, a key thing to note here or observe here is that typically as we do in the real world, most of the small scale environments are synthetically constructed out of material that we can find. So for example, you have got boxes or vinyl stickers or in the last case you have got air ducts which the F100 uh, racetracks actually used to construct the tracks. In the mid scale, uh, the robots can now operate both indoors and outdoors and as a result you can have both synthetically created environments like you see in the first three sub figures as well as naturalistic environments that you see in the last figure there. And for full scale vehicles, uh, you typically drive them in realistic uh, and outdoor conditions and that's why you have one off-road and one on-road uh, scenario depicted there. For this presentation, we will be taking a look at these six scenarios. Uh, for the first uh, scenario, we have purposefully kept it common across all the three states uh, and it's just a scaled up version of uh, the tiny time from small scale to mid scale to full scale. And for uh, the other three scenarios, those are operational do uh, design domain specific for each way. So let us delve a little bit into each of the environments that we'll be discussing today. Uh, this is the tiny town which is a feature rich environment for any small scale vehicle because it's got different road features, uh, intersections as well as parking lots. And this is the Porto racetrack uh, which is actually the digital twin of a physical F110 racetrack from uh, CPS IoT week in 2018. And it features basically a straight stretch of, uh, of the track along with two U-turns and a uh, uh, low curvature bend in it. In the mid-scale environment, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a scaled up version of the tiny town first to keep things common across different platforms. But more specifically, we have a forest scenario which uh, is uh, featuring uneven terrain, uh, vegetation and obstructions, mountains as well as rigid, uh, rigid uh, terrain and water body in the middle. Finally, coming to the full scale environments, uh, we have uh, what we call the city scenario because it's primarily uh, what you see in the bottom, a dense urban infrastructure. Uh, however, for people to get creative, uh, this scenario also offers other features such as a highway, a mountain pass and a dirt road uh, that, that the vehicles can drive on. Uh, apart from the, uh, the environment themselves and the vehicles themselves, uh, variability testing is a key factor when it comes to verification and validation and uh, the simulator offers sweeping across different parameters for the time of the day as well as weather simulation as you see in the video on the right uh, where the top two rows signify uh, progressively sweeping from dawn to dusk and last one is at night and the bottom two rows uh, depict uh, variation of the weather from sunny, cloudy, foggy, rainy and snowy. Uh, the last thing that you want any digital twin ecosystem uh, and you really need this one uh, for it to work either in uh, for autonomy development or for human in the loop factor studies is the APIs and HMIs and as you can see uh, from the glimpse of the videos on the left as well as iconic representations on the right Autodrive uh, currently offers uh, compatibility to a whole host of APIs for uh, software and autonomy stack development as well as different HMIs for both human in the loop studies as well as data collection. So let us now talk about a case study that we chose for validating uh, autonomy algorithm deployed on different scales and ODDs of the vehicle. Uh, first up here is Nigel which uh, as Chinma mentioned targets the autonomous uh, driving domain and the task here is that of autonomous parking using a 2D LiDAR that's uh, equipped on top of the vehicle. Uh, the, uh, the, auto, uh, the software stack that we have used across all the different uh, vehicles here will be Autoware Universe uh, just for clarification and the algorithm at hand would be to now map the environment, record the trajectory and then track it autonomously. What you see here is a 2D representation of the map using the laser scan in which the vehicle localizes uh, during autonomous operation and then tracks the reference trajectory. What's also interesting to note in this case is a uh, sim to real transfer that we achieved uh, for a similar kind of uh, path, but not the exact same that's uh, 
represented in the simulation and uh, we did not change any perception parameters that is for the slam as well as localization algorithms as well as the controller gains used for tracking the path uh, in the real world and that kind of uh, goes to show the case in point wherein uh, using digital twins for autonomy validation can actually uh, target any uh, point in the spectrum from virtual to physical deployments. Next up, uh, we have the F110, which uh, targets the autonomous racing domain, and the perception modality here again is a 2D LiDAR, and the workflow or the algorithm here is again the same, where we map the environment, uh, record a trajectory, uh, and this now trajectory recording can either be done manually using one of the HMI methods that I mentioned earlier, or you can directly have waypoints generated by say fitting a race line or optimizing the race line on the, on the track map. And finally what you see currently in the action is the trajectory tracking uh, happening live. And as the operational design domain di is different here, uh, there is a key thing that is different from the earlier videos, where in, uh, in the earlier case in autonomous parking you had to go from point A to point B, the vehicle here uh, as opposed to stopping at an end point needs to continuously lap the racetrack for a predetermined number of laps. Uh, finally, uh, a key takeaway again from this slide as well is the sim to real transfer wherein we did not change the perception or the controller parameters and the system performed reliably well uh, in the real world as well. Uh, coming to mid-scale, uh, Hunter SE, as Chinmay mentioned, it can target both on-road as well as off-road driving and that's particularly uh, why we chose these two case studies. Uh, the first row uh, depicts an on-road navigation task, the same autonomous parking from earlier, wherein uh, now the vehicle has a 3D LiDAR. Uh, so coming to the last point here, uh, we actually also tried a representation of the map in two different ways. First of them being a 2D occupancy grid map, wherein we just choose a slice of the point cloud data and uh, try to say that it is an augmented laser scan from which we construct the 2D occupancy grid map, localize on it and then uh, track the reference trajectory. And that is only possible because the environment there uh, is pretty simplistic where you have vertical walls and even the traffic signs are way uh, above the LiDAR slicing point. However, for the off-road trajectory, uh, using just a plain slice of the LiDAR cannot give you reliable results in terms of localization and that is why you have to use and rely on the entire 3D point cloud map for like mapping as well as localizing when uh, tracking the trajectory in real time. Moving on to full scale uh, open CAV, again what you see here is similar results uh, that you saw for Hunter SE, uh, wherein in the top row you, we are spoofing the autonomy algorithm uh, to think that it's using a 2D LiDAR instead of a 3D one, and in the bottom row we are actually uh, required to use a 3D LiDAR because the, all the elements in the map cannot fit into a single uh, slice of the laser scan. And again, the al algorithm is, uh, or the operational design domain here is the same as that of uh, on-road navigation, wherein we are trying to uh, take the open CAV from point A to a parking spot, and uh, hopefully park it autonomously. So to conclude, uh, we saw how AutoDrive ecosystem uh, enables the use of different vehicles across different scales uh, as well as infrastructural elements for constructing scenarios and environments for different operational design domains. We also saw how the different HMIs, that is human machine interfaces and APIs, that is application programming interfaces, uh, can be leveraged to develop autonomy algorithms. And finally, we also saw how the ecosystem as a whole enables uh, the validation of autonomy algorithms from virtual to physical testing within a spectrum of hybrid testing possibilities as well. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. Uh, for more information about auto drive in general, you can scan the QR code and that will take you to the website. But at this point, I'd like to thank everyone for your kind attention and we'll be happy to answer any questions at this point.